Mediterranean Sea, 6,000 BC. A wall of water taller than the Statue of Liberty races across the sea. The tsunami crashes into the coasts of three continents. Millions of tons of seawater rush ashore at more than 30 miles an hour. It sounds like a freight train coming. So if you know something about tsunamis, you know what to do, and that's, that's run. A cheetah would be lucky to outrun this wave. A person really has no chance. Ancient coastal settlements are obliterated in an instant. Seawater penetrates for miles inland. The water level just starts to rise, and next thing you know, you have this entire torrent of a river running through the streets of your town. From their perspective, it would have just happened instantaneously without any knowledge that it was coming at all. Within hours, the storm has devastated villages for hundreds of miles. The entire eastern Mediterranean is in ruins. 8,000 years ago, the sort of architecture and engineering you saw would have just been obliterated by a tsunami. Even today, we see modern buildings, steel-reinforced concrete, just being raised by the power of these waves. So you can imagine a prehistoric stone building or a prehistoric wooden structure. It would have just been like a paper box just destroyed. As in 2004, it is believed the waves from the ancient tsunami penetrated far inland. That is the, the big problem with the tsunami, just don't stop. It's just a never-ending wave that goes in. So if you have a, a plane, a very flat land, then a tsunami can move inland by many, many miles. We've seen that in 2004, the tsunami flooded about six miles inland. Could the scene of destruction inflicted upon Southeast Asia have been a repeat of what happened in the Mediterranean 8,000 years before? Could this ancient storm also have obliterated thousands of miles of coastline? Survivors in Thailand said there was no warning of the impending disaster. 11,000 people or more were Unlike the 2004 tsunami, where the immense destruction and plight of its victims were documented for the world to see, this ancient storm unleashed its destruction long before recorded history. The victims and the scale of this prehistoric megastorm are a mystery. The speed of a landslide coming from a volcano collapse can be very high. This can mean more than 200 miles per hour, which can be compared to a Formula One car. That's an incredibly fast speed. It's, it's really, really very fast. For a huge hunk of debris the size of Manhattan to be sliding down a mountain at that speed is just a colossal event. They now know both the size of the landslide and how quickly it hurtled into the sea. With those two key pieces of evidence, Italian scientist Maria Teresa Pareschi and her team are able to create a computer model of the tsunami. For the first time in 8,000 years, they can see the storm that raced across the Mediterranean. The landslide creates initial waves 165 feet tall. The first area hit is southern Italy pummeled with a 10-story tall wall of water. If you could have a 165-foot wave created, it would be a huge monster. And it is like a wall, like a cement wall coming at you on the beach. The impact of that amount of water could only possibly be related to the amount of force of an atomic bomb. According to the model, waves from the ancient tsunami would have reached as high as 165 feet, larger than any wave in the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. Get in, get in, get in. in 2004, there was a, about a 90-foot wave at, at its peak height. And looking along the coast, you can see basically all the vegetation and, and the towns and villages and everything that were there was removed. So a wave that was double that height would about double the effect. The simulation shows that after hammering Italy, the ancient tsunami would have raced on toward Greece and Libya, hitting those coasts with waves 40 feet tall. 
the tsunami would have roared ashore and penetrated far inland. You know, imagine the Mississippi running through the streets of your town, taking with it everything. And if you're a person who gets swept into the water, your situation is very dire. But the tsunami did not stop at Libya and Greece. The model estimates the ancient storm would have been powerful enough to reach the shores of the Middle East, more than 1,200 miles from Sicily. One of the most destructive forces of the tsunami is the element of surprise. If this tsunami arrives while you're sleeping, at night, when you're unaware, it'll just wash you away. You can drown right in your own home. At Atlit Yam, archaeologists had found a huge cache of fish, which had been caught and then prepared by villagers for consumption or trade. Instead, the fish were abandoned. The Neolithic era was not a consumerist one like today. Such valuable goods could not be thrown away, and that leads us to believe that all the goods were suddenly abandoned. Archaeologists also discovered human remains with fractures and missing teeth. Injuries Pareschi says are common among tsunami victims. In 2004, the deaths were caused not only due to drowning, but also to violent strikes from objects that were transported by the tsunami and struck people. Divers also discover some human remains randomly scattered about the site, a contrast to the formal graves located in other parts of the village. Normally, the dead bodies of a Neolithic village would have been buried. We think that some of these scattered bones may be bodies of tsunami victims. With each piece of evidence, Pareschi becomes more convinced that a tsunami triggered off the coast of Sicily 8,000 years ago, raced 1,200 miles across the Mediterranean, and struck this ancient village. But not everyone is convinced. The tsunami hypothesis is fascinating. It's a very, very interesting uh, scenario. And it is possible. The potential hazard was there, but we cannot say by the archaeological evidence that it did happen. Ehud Galili, the underwater archaeologist who found Atlit Yam, is skeptical that a tsunami is responsible for the settlement's demise. When the village was occupied, little by little, sea level have risen. We can estimate that the living conditions became so uh, bad in the region of the village that they couldn't uh, live there anymore. We don't have any uh, archaeological evidence that can uh, hint to this, but we estimate that little by little, families left there. Pareschi acknowledges her skeptics, but remains confident her tsunami theory is correct. Perhaps each discovery, each piece of evidence could be justified differently. But these same occurrences could also be linked to a single cause, the tsunami. Proving something without a doubt in, in science is always difficult. In geology, it's, it's virtually impossible. So what we find instead is, is, a, is a lot of disconnected bits of evidence. And we say, well, it's much more likely that, that this happened, but, but smoking guns are rare.